So this is a brief tutorial on how to import green screen assets, overlay graphics on top of a green screen footage pre-recorded in the TV studio. I've already got my assets organized in a folder under week four, which has both a, an example of green screen footage that I've picked up online. It's also there on Canvas for you to use as a, as a training material. There's a couple of um, <clears throat> exported slides that I've created with Keynote, and there's a, sc a screencast which I've done with uh, QuickTime and using some uh, Google graphics that I've created and some Keynote graphics as well. So once you've got all the assets ready, including your footage, your presentation footage, and the various overlays you want to use, um, the first step is to go ahead and open or well, start a new library. File, new library, green screen example. Okay. <clears throat> I'll save this in the same folder where all my assets are. And now I've got a new library called green screen example. And then the next step is to import the media. If you're not sure which library you're in and you don't want to navigate to it using the regular menus, you can uh, hit Command Tab and go back to Finder or click on Finder down and go back to your uh, window where all the assets are organized, where all these files are organized, and just grab the whole folder and simply drag it on top. Now we're at the, re at the right folder. I'll go ahead and import all all the stuff that I'll need for this tutorial. I'm now going to go ahead and start a new project by clicking on the new project tab here. I'm going to call it green screen example. The video format is 480p, <clears throat> which is, sorry, 180p, which is 1920 by 1080, 25p. The rendering is always on Apple ProRes 422 and stereo 48 kilohertz. I'm going to hit OK. And now I've now got a new project called Green Screen Example, which is also open down here. If you're not sure, you can double click it to make sure you're working on the correct project. Now, once you've got all your assets within the project, the first thing to do is to take the green screen footage and lay it here as the basis for your presentation. If you've got certain areas, certain places where you'd like the green screen to, um, sorry, where you'd, where you'd like slides to appear, um, you could do a few things. You could either create a marker by pressing M, which gives you a marker, and you could give it a name if you like, slide 1 for example. Or you could already go ahead and cut the footage at this point. Um, that will be a command B. I'm using command B. Which might make your life a bit easier because um, the areas where you cut the footage will correspond directly to the areas where you will put in your um, background overlays, background assets. So one of these, some of these clips that you have prepared. So in this case I've got a few locations where I'd like to um, put a background footage in. Um, little comment I always keep, I always use and I try and repeat to you guys as well and I recommend using snap snapping when you um, when you work make sure snapping is on snapping helps your um, locator kind of glue on to areas where you've where there's a cut or a piece of um, footage is starting or ending which can greatly improve the synchronicity with which you work so to make sure you put things in the right place so they're synchronized. Um, 
So the first thing I'll do is use a uh, regular slide. As you can see, these slides above here are TIFF formatted. TIFF has a um, not only RGB values, red, green, and blue for each pixel, but it also has an alpha layer, which is a transparent layer. So if you place a TIFF on top of your footage, you'll already be able to see both the... Um, Tell us about it both the video and the slide overlaid as you can see so this the background of this slide is completely transparent so this is a sh this is an easy way to um, overlay keynote graphs if you export them as a tiff and make sure the background is transparent i'm going to show how to do that in a different tutorial but for this tutorial because we're using chroma key, what's called chroma key, which is green screen, or it could be any other color really. Um, we're going to use slides that do not have this um, transparency overlaid behind them, and also some footage, which is also not transparent. So the first thing to do is um, take your footage or your slide, it doesn't matter, they're treated exactly the same. I'm going to take a piece of video and place it underneath the image you want to use. So in this case, the footage, the green screen footage is on top and the screencast footage is in the back. This is the screencast, screencast I created. This just has a map, a scan over a map. What I'll do now, um, I actually put the cuts in the wrong location, so I'm going to readjust the footage to make it all in one, one go. And I'll get rid of this little marker here. By control clicking the, market, the marker, you get this menu, and you can choose to delete it. Now we've got clean footage on top. So we've got two video pieces, and again, this could be an this could be a, an image as well. Here's a still image afterwards as well, just for you to see. They're treated exactly the same. Next thing we'll do is we'll have to apply an effect onto the green screen footage called keyer keyer a keyer. Um, if you look at your uh, effects menu, which you could, which is find found here. There's a, a section called keying, which has a luma keyer and a keyer. We're going to specifically use the keying, the keyer, and we just put this on top. You already see the backgrounds changed to the image. What the keyer does is recognize the color green and um, make it transparent, applies a, a transparency layer instead of the green part. So in this case, because the video is filmed very well, very good, because um, the green is, is even evenly distributed and the um, and the lighting is good, there's good separation between the figure and the background, then you can already see that the um, the overlay happened quite seamlessly and the results are already quite good. Here. Okay. Same with the image. If I switch to the image, the overlay came out quite well. Um, another thing you might like to do is work with the image, it's with a background image, change, changing some of its properties. If you Double click on the background image or on the background video. Let's work with the video first because we started with that. And let's say we wanted the video to be a bit larger and a bit diagonal as it is on the BBC News cast. So the first thing we can do is uh, double click it, go to the screencast area and scale it. Scale. Use the scale bar to scale the video. Um, 
there's of course a limit to how much you can scale it because um, this is the it's limited to the size of your screen right so this is a full screen size it's why we're here black box insurance review so the preview might not look like a like a full screen here but it is a full screen that's because we're at 50 percent of um, zoom on this uh, window you could also use fit and then we can see it in full screen okay now in order to change something about the background we could use rotation for example which probably in most cases you would not like to do but you could also do some scaling for example Well, that, as we just did before, you could scale the whole thing. You could scale just one axis, which would make the footage skewed. Typically, it's not a very good idea to scale just one axis. You can also move the footage from side to side or we can put this at the center as it was before so just by going back to the same value as the y is to so 94 in this case and I'll put y back into x y back into zero. Um, <clears throat> could also use distort, which um, kind of bends things around. And I guess in the example from the BBC that you saw, um, we could easily use distort in order to animate this clip. So, for example, there's a distort value for bottom left, bottom right top right, top left, and both of them are from, we've got an X and a Y distort element. So if we distort the X, it'll go this way. If we distort the, the Y, it'll go that way. To create a simple screen within a screen effect, we could probably distort the X on the bottom left and on the top left. So in the same value, one, seven, six. Now we've got a screen that's a little bit more skewed here. And then if we added a bit more Y on both sides, sorry, a bit more Y on both sides, can sort of create an effect of um, geometry happening within the frame. So as you can see, Y goes up for as long as it can. I'm going to take it up all the way. And the other, the bottom right Y, sorry, the bottom right X, that's the wrong one. Let's take the bottom right y and move it downwards because we want to make it longer and stretch it all the way to the end of the screen. So here we go. We've got both the up and the down going with the same value. So as you can see I've shifted this corner up here by 102 pixels up and the corner down here which is the bottom right I've shifted downwards by minus 102 pixels. Now if you want to work with this corner as well, the top left and the top and the bottom left these two corners, we can use their y factor and their x factor as well so if I push their x factor the bottom left and the bottom right once again a bit further Let's say 270, sorry, 
270 and there's 270 in this corner as well. Now we've got a diagonal screen in the background. Now what I'll do is I'll <clears throat> I'm going to make a, a little animation, automation animation to make to try and illustrate an effect where the screen is coming out from being, being frontal is being shifted away to becoming diagonal. So I'll decide what is the point where I want the screen to become to be diagonal and I'll make it this point. This is the point where I want to, the screen to become diagonal whereas at the beginning, in the beginning I would like it to be straight and let's say I'd like it to, sh to start shifting towards diagonal here. So I've just made two markers using the letter M. So use the, the, key no the keyboard letter M to create these markers. So I put myself on the first marker. <clears throat> Sorry, I put myself on the second marker. And then I'm going to um, create a keyframe, add a keyframe for all the values that I'm going to, that I've changed. So all of those values, if we look at the background video, just highlight the background video, go into the settings here, and you'll see the values that have changed. So there's a scaling element. I'm going to create a keyframe on this side here. There's a distort element. So all of the all of the different um, dimensions have been distorted, and that's it. So these are the seven elements I've changed, or six rather. Then I'm going to go back to the first indicator I've put, the first marker I've put in, and I'll change the footage back, change those parameters back to where they were initially before the distortion happened, which is in this case 0, 0, 0, 0. In the case of the scaling, right now it's at 94%, I'll put it back to 100%. Okay, So that's 100% scale and a 0% distortion. If we look at this briefly, insurance complaint. How the company you are with you can see that the screen seems to be shifting away. So once again, let's look at this without the volume, without the speech. Screen is shifting back. Okay, so we've created a backdrop which is animated ever so slightly. We've also added several types of footage. We've got a slide here. You can have a few slides, different ones. Once again, importantly, the footage has to be underneath the green screen footage. Of course, with the slides, we might want to change their location. You can um, fiddle with their position their scale, their size, if you want to make smaller slides, for example, a, so you can scale back. And in this case, if I want to locate them on her left, and maybe a bit higher. So it's it's all quite easy to, to do. In this case, I've shifted the position minus 440.4 pixels to the left, <clears throat> changing the position here. You could literally just drag your mouse, click and drag, on top of the number, and 196 pixels to the to the top, and the scale is 56% of the original size of the slide. Um, you could do the same with the rest of the slides, so just copy those numbers in. 56. Minus 440.4, oops, 
56, sorry, um, that was 196, that's the Y position, and 56% of the scale. If you use exactly the same numbers, then you'll get a, seamler, a seamless transition between slides. We'll do the same with this one. Minus <clears throat> one four four dot four, I think, and then one nine six fifty six. That's the wrong one, of course, wrong wrong values. So that's four forty dot four rather than one four four. 440.4 to the negative, of course. So now all slides are aligned in the same location. And you can see this background footage as well. <clears throat> now let's say the background right now is quite dark. Um, let's say we wanted to add some kind of a kind of win all identity background for the whole video. So I'm going to go ahead and import another another piece of uh, footage, which is just the, the Wino identity package. So file import media. And I'm back in our folder. I've got a Wino intro graphics on the ready. And I'll add that in. And I'm going to put this video in the background behind everything else. I'm just going to go ahead and look at right. So this way, what we have, and of course, yeah, make sure you get rid of the volume because there's some music in the background there. <clears throat> and now what we've got is a dual layered video with the window graphic in the background and the screencast we created before with a map in the middle and we've got um, a bunch of keynotes key keynote slides coming in as well and eventually reverting back to just a you know, graphic. And we can also, if you wanted at some point, for example, to fade the presenter into the background, we could um, say we wanted to do that right now. So this is at 1 minute 13 into the cast. We once again use key, use, uh, sorry, use um, the um, keyframes in order to do that. So what we're looking into is um, I'm going to double click on the video itself and you've got within the compositing uh, area you could change different blend modes of course that can look quite funny. This is a normal blend mode but you can also change the opacity. When you change the opacity you change the transparency of the person of this of this footage. So what I want to do is create um, a fade out. And rather than using an effect for fade out, I want to control have more control over the fade out properties. So I'll make a marker here where I want to fade out to start, and a, another marker where I want it to finish. Well, somewhere doesn't really matter. Marker here, <clears throat> and we'll switch back to the first marker and go to. Well, we don't need the key here anymore, we can hide that. Go into the compositing menu and um, add a keyframe at this point for 100% opacity, which means it'll stick a point here where the opacity has to be 100%, an automated point. And then we'll switch back to the second marker and we'll change the opacity to zero. Then we'll put another keyframe 
sorry, we'll keep the keyframe there. Just gonna make sure that no, I've made a mistake here, sorry. Just put the, just put the opacity back to zero. You don't need to press the keyframe again. So we've got one keyframe here and which ends here. So there she is, fading out. This is quite a long fade. So I might un undo what I just did, edit, undo opacity change, and I'll make the opacity change a bit quicker by changing it here. You don't have to have those markers. Those markers I'm using just for convenience. So here we go, back to zero, and I can delete these two markers. And let's see what's happening presenter is slowly disappearing in the background once again. There we go. And we can end this nicely with a win all. Win a take all. Takes all. <laughs> okay. So this is a quick tutorial about these, um, about how to do a chroma key and how to change the background overlays so that they seem like an interactive set of graphics in the background. One last thing I would probably do to make this seem a bit um, more smooth is to blur a little bit the infographic. I would the intro graphic. I would kind of be inclined to do that. If you look into um, into the blur section here in the effects, so once again, the effects can be found here on this pane here, and you go into the blur area, and just uh, usually pick the Gaussian blur, this one, and I'll just put that on top of the you know intro graphics, and. Um, for as long as they're, for as long as the window intro graphics are not, uh, are in the background of something else, when we go back to only using window intro graphics, then we can also um, we can have them less blurred. The other thing, if you if you notice, the window intro graphics are quite quick, they're quite fast. Um, the other thing you could do is. Um, change the speed of the background, so speed retime, so that's called retime in Final Cut Pro um, so let's use retime to slow down by to slow down to 50% okay, so that's a longer longer clip as well and I'll copy that again. So I'm going to loop this the clip in this speed. As you can see, we've now yeah, we've now got a softer version of the of the intro graphics. I might retime this clip as well. We've got a softer version of the intro graphic going more slowly in the background. Let's look at it slightly slower which makes things a bit less painful on the eye, a bit less um, attention grabbing. Okay, and the map the map becomes more the center of things. Um, then once all the graphics are done we can go back and see the regular window footage. And I think I'll slow down the speed of that footage as well. So retime it to make it slower by 50% as well. And I'm going to cut away the numbers bit and just use the graphics bits. Leading towards the logo. You can see whether you like you know, to put on some blur over this one as well. It's up to you. When you're done, when, every, when the work is done, go to 
share master file or you could hit command a command so my command e so command e let's have a quick browse see that your footage looks all right go into the settings make sure they're correct 1920 by 1080 is the standard we know um, resolution video and audio should be exported and it's at apple prores 42 <coughs> file hit next you go to your <coughs> go to your folder and click on green screen example in this case I'll make it two because I've already exported it once save and you'll see the progress wheel here changing and the sharing is taking place I've already done this so I'm going to go ahead and cancel but that is the way to share your your clip this is the resulting video go ahead and play it in this case I reduced I removed the vol the volume the sound from <clears throat> the readers um, narration because it's got frankly nothing to do with you know um, but as you can see the overlay worked quite well there's a slightly soft edge to it um, which is a feature of um, well how it's specifically been set up we can also work with a keyer to create a straighter um, a more sharp edge but we'll do that in another tutorial at some point and that's it for now good luck